I wanted to start a new series called Insights from We the People. And you all have sent me by email some amazing things throughout time. So much so that I am almost overwhelmed with not with my own ideas and trying to combine and put your ideas into the mix as well. Because I feel like that's good. I would want that when I would, had barely any subscribers. I would have loved someone to put some of my ideas out there. So this one comes from a friend, Paul. Thank you, Paul. He sent me an amazing email in relation to the eclipse in regards to my WTF is the moon video. And I still don't know. I watched that movie Moonfall, terrible movie as far as scripting and acting and everything goes, but special effects and art were phenomenal, and the ideas behind it were great. So while they were pumping out all kinds of um, interesting, maybe hidden truths in the design, hidden in the art, kind of metaphorically throughout the movie, they were also pumping the audience with tons of Apollo, NASA is the best, China will save us, all this, all this stuff that was uh, totally ridiculous, and as people are driving through in SUVs when the world is ripping apart. It's like, ugh. Those things. I haven't seen a movie like that in a while, and that part was bad. But all the other parts with the effects were cool. And is the moon a mechanical thing? And now this video from the 1999 eclipse shows something very interesting happening in the distance. And um, this guy Paul says that he was there. I read the comments of the video if you find it. There's a, on YouTube, it's a 1999 Eclipse UK video. The comments are amazing. There's a, you, I took the sound out of this one, but there's a boy talking about saying that it looks like aliens. There's uh, interesting stuff, but it's, you'll see. Again, the sun, the moon, what are they? And then to think that together when they combine in this amazing way for an eclipse, which are on their own mathematical pattern, that perhaps something amazing happens. Perhaps it produces a ridiculous energy. Not just does the world go dark as in nighttime in the middle of the day, which is rare and sends animals into a kind of a tither, but something else is definitely happening. And I'll show you the video. There's a video going out about an Indian temple providing some ethereal uh, action above it. But take a look at this. I don't know if anyone's ever pointed this out. And that's the title of the video you can find on YouTube if you look that up. But people were watching it, people, and this, as it gets dark, I, there's a five minute clip, but I put about two minutes in here. But as it gets dark, something amazing happens over that cathedral. Keep looking over the spires, over the towers. And it's almost, ha it almost begins right in the direct middle of this two minute eclipse session. So keep looking because it's about to appear. And there's a bunch of different flashes of light in the distance too, kind of, so you like street lights and things, they all kind of turn on. But these ones that you'll see are different. There's something about them. They're not fireworks, because there are fireworks, boom, going off. They're not flares. They're something different that will hover, and it reminds me of that Indian Temple video. And I don't think anyone in the comments had pointed this part out. But look, something is happening up there. Some energy, some ethereal form is taking shape, and it looks like it's busted, almost. It almost looks like a machine that's broken. Whereas if it would be fully symmetrical, if it was fully functioning, so maybe something on the inside is blocked, maybe this is just the remains of some of that power. But look, the fireworks, everything goes off differently, and that just kind of hovers there, doing something. So this made me think, you know, not only were these uh, ethereal devices probably capturing lightning and the energy from that, they were probably capturing and maybe even designed specifically for eclipses which is even more phenomenal. Since they happen so rarely, it'd almost be like, wow, why would you create something, a massive building, designed to work in harmony with the eclipses that are so rare, this energetic phenomenon that must have something substantial to do with our reality that we totally don't know about. And you know, now we treat them amazingly. You can tell on eclipse days, something's different. Something's in the air. The animals do interesting things. The people act a little differently. Weird things happen around the event. I'd like to see if anyone's ever had a Geiger counter, not that specifically, but some other measuring energetic device to see what happens. You know, it is a very unique experience that we face on Earth. And I wonder really if the ancient masters, structure builders, architecturists, geniuses were in total knowledge of this. So that happened, yeah, for two minutes. And right in the middle is when it happened, right at its peak. So what were they, how were they harnessing that? What does that mean? What in the past would people do? Would they just gather and like 
somehow take it out of it, somehow extract the energy, somehow utilize it inside the church, inside the temple when it was happening. See, this one's far more symmetrical. It's a little closer to the top, and, but it's also a smaller structure. So the different sizes, every one is like an instrument tuned for this energy that we can't see and we have been lost. Science does not even want to touch it. But I bet you there's some renegade scientists out there who know exactly what's going on and have demonstrated this on their own. I don't know, is it mercury? Is it something completely different? Is it just the ether, the, ether, the nature that we have surrounding us getting utilized in its proper way? And what does it do? Does it provide power, electricity, sound, uh, light, vision, a glimpse into something? What is it? We need to have some geniuses discover and reevaluate what is going on in these and what these buildings are for because this is a huge part of the puzzle. And thank you, Paul, and everyone else there, out there. Keep the insights coming. We'll do more of these. Bless you all.